two things I want to talk about. Uh, the first is debt and borrowing, and then a follow-up to Senator Vogel's conversation with you on special funds. So uh, the governor's budget last year included the first payment in a long time that went into the rainy day fund. And while this really should be welcome news to many, uh, the concern is that we're still borrowing money. In fact, we borrowed the money that we put into the rainy day fund. So to taxpayers, it's like having a maxed out credit card, but putting that money from the credit card into your savings account. So to a lot of folks, it just doesn't make sense. Can you update our committee on the debt and borrowing obligations of the Commonwealth as of today? And, and really the reason I ask is that just last week, our general fund went into the red by about $430 million, which resulted in our state taking out a line of credit. Um, and, and that's a concern. Um, is this a common occurrence uh, um, among state governments with regard to their budget? Or are we an outlier in that area? And, and what do you think is a, um, contributing or what, is, what can we attribute our negative cash balance um, to? Okay, I'll start with the uh, STIP last week and our cash flow right now. Um, it is a regular occurrence. Uh, we have had uh, short-term borrowing ever since 1963, and it's really about cash flow in uh, Pennsylvania. We have a, a majority of our payments go out in the beginning of the fiscal year, while we don't receive a majority of our revenue until the end of the fiscal year. So we have a lot of payments going out, and we just need a little bit of uh, a short-term loan to until we receive that revenue. And um, I think it is getting better than it than it has been in the last uh, several years. There were several. Uh, instances where we had to borrow money um, in the beginning of the administration due to the structural deficit, and that structural deficit has been uh, addressed uh, greatly in the first four years. Um, we do uh, continue to have some one-time um, offsets in, in this proposed budget, but it's much less than has been done in, in the past, and we're hopeful that we can uh, come up with some additional um, new revenue sources without broad-based taxes, and there are several proposed in this uh, budget, and we hope that they would continue to grow and, and uh, reduce the need or the, the number of times we need to have that short-term uh, borrowing. Well, I certainly think that would be a, a, a good objective, to not have to incur debt, um, to just you know, keep the lights on and, and the programs running, which brings me to my next conversation about special funds. You know, um, when the governor came out with this budget proposal with this shuffling of special funds in and out of the various programs, um, you have to imagine uh, my great surprise with his change of heart. And, you know, in part because this is the same governor whose office said that today's proposal fails to address our challenges, rating special funds will mean cuts to programs. Um, and, and that's what the governor's spokesperson said when I joined several House members a few years ago in an attempt to end a budget stalemate using unaccounted for and non-dedicated taxpayer dollars from special funds, right? So, you know, we look at Florida, we've had this conversation with some other secretaries. Um, you know, they have more than $90 billion in their state budget. We only have $33 billion. So the governor's budget suggests that we're, we're growing state spending by about 2.8%, but it fails to really account for the, the shuffling of these funds, um, like the ones in DCNR and DEP. So um, the budget's convoluted, difficult to follow, and, and that's what Senator Vogel got at with you. Um, so, you know, I, I will say this. Um, the governor's brought more attention to these special funds, and I think that we need to take the next step, and that's to true up our budget um, with regard to these special funds becoming part of the general fund so that the taxpayers can better understand how the money that they send to Harrisburg is spent. And, um, you know, I think if these funds that are sitting, these 218 special funds with their 999 accounts and the 998 accounts, um, you know, if, if we could utilize those funds, um, do you believe that that could make up for the reduced, um, or could it reduce or lessen the burden um, on our taxpayers? Would we not have to do all of the borrowing um, that we have to do? To, to make the lights stay on and keep things running? Um, I think, you know, to talk about the proposal that was um, 
mentioned last year to you know all the special funds, I think uh, taking them broadly and emptying them out into the general fund was not something uh, that the governor is in favor of. And, and this uh, proposal for $75 million, $76 million to be used for environmental uh, programs is really environmental funds dedicated for environmental sources, and that's why we felt this was an, uh, an appropriate use of those funds. Uh, we're not transferring them into the general fund, we're transferring expenses to them, uh, so it's slightly different. And I, and I think, again, to talk about shifting of funds, you know, again, and uh, I'll talk about DHS because that's what I'm mostly familiar with, but we often use um, available revenue sources, create uh, new opportunities for uh, revenue to come in there to offset general fund dollars uh, where we can. If there's available prior year dollars, we are uh, often using that to offset general funds. So there is a lot of shifting, but it really is to use those dollars uh, in the best way that we can so that we do um, reduce the general fund need.